time. So obviously with everything going on this year, I thought it was the perfect time to start an Etsy shop, a small business, a independent art career, if you will. Pretty much everyone else thought this too, but I'm gonna tell you my experience making and selling Christmas cards. Starting an Etsy is something I've been considering for a while on and off, um, especially after completing my BA, having a lot of leftover art that was just, just lying around, but like I could be making money with this, so like Etsy seemed like the perfect place to go. Honestly, I never thought about creating Christmas cards, um, but I guess I also never thought there would be a global pandemic uh, endangering billions, um, eroding the economy, and revealing no shred of funding for the arts and jobs in that sector a year after I graduated. So uh, I guess here we are. So anyway, I wanted to walk you through my experience so far, um, the steps I took to conjure this out of basically nothing. Um, I didn't really have much of a following or anything. I only started posting on Instagram regularly in June this year. So it's all progressing and times are weird, so why not capture this moment and show it in video form? The main things I kept in mind when I approached starting an Etsy shop were what am I going to enjoy? I knew that if I were going to be selling and enjoying the process, it would have to be illustrations, paintings, stuff I would want to be doing and working on generally in my life anyway. So I knew my kind of niche area um, and of course there are specific genres to look into within this niche area um, but the most important thing to consider is will it have an audience? Well, Once you have a few ideas connected to it, uh, it's a good thing to get yourself familiar with what's popular within that niche interested area, what trends well. So say you want to draw frocks and your niche is very like goblin, cottage core centric um, there are going to be amazing styles and aesthetics to be inspired by and then you will be doing well in that community because people will just love that sort of thing. That's an important thing to remember by the way. During this process of gathering ideas and inspiration collecting, you should just copy from others. Um, it's not going to help you grow as an artist and it's just plagiarism. With all this research and uh, exploring different styles and niches, you might start to get an idea of how much time this is going to take. It's one thing to be passionate about, but are you also going to be organised? Are you going to be able to prevent becoming overwhelmed and burnt out? Good things to help with this are to-do lists, uh, tracking hours depending on each thing, making sure not to work over a certain amount, and also making sure not to procrastinate over a certain amount. I'm not saying that these are things that are make or break. I'm still waiting for the transferable skill of time management to transfer into my lifestyle and it's been five years since I put that on my personal statement to university. So what I'm saying is if I can do this and not have any major incidents so far, so can you. Another big one to consider in this process is finances. There's no time limit here, there's no due date for starting an Etsy. If you need to save money for this process, then do, because it all will cost you money and it might even take a while until you reach profit. How much is printing gonna cost, your art materials, your art software. One thing that's really helped me is just making a spreadsheet. Uh, you will thank yourself for it. Lovely commitment and patience is gonna get you a long way. Patience specifically, I would say. <laughs> Uh, it's going to take a long time to feel like you're getting somewhere, but once you do and you start seeing those sales come in, it's such a good feeling, I promise you. So I've done all that and have a vague idea of what I'm going to be selling. Now I just need to do it. So come with me now to Photoshop, sit back, enjoy this time lapse, drink some water, and I will brush you through my choices. So you might look at what I'm drawing here and think I've gone with something really classic cottage style and cutesy to appease to the biggest demographic with money, old people. And you'd be right. But also, I myself have had the very same obsession with the magical, beautiful Highland cow. My family make the journey, the pilgrimage, if you will, to Scotland at least once a year since my birth and every visit it is my sworn duty to find and bring back a new Highland Cow souvenir. 
it is important to consider here that there are very bad tourist souvenirs out there. However, I find the best Highland Cow themed tourist souvenir every time. So this is to say I found something I like to draw. I've even been commissioned to draw. So I knew it would do well and I knew it would be fun. Having said that, I did still try and design something that was a bit different to the classic Highland Cow scene. Found on many cushions across the world, just to help me start to establish some sort of style here. That haggis is making me really happy. All right. So after I was happy with all these designs, um, I popped a few of them through anime to uh, have some fun gifts to post. Um, and I was ready to order some printing. Now of course you can do your own printing uh, if you have a decent printer and time to get it right, but honestly I didn't want the stress of that. So I had the stress of not seeing them before ordering a huge amount instead. In all honesty, I did have a miss out here. There was a sample batch coming to me so I could feel the different types of paper, uh, but I was getting impatient. So, uh, and this was October, like it wasn't even November yet, so I had no business being impatient. Commitment and patience is gonna get you a long way, uh, but I had never done this before, and I was feeling like I should have already had them out by then, so it was very silly. But anyway, I bit the bullet and ended up ordering a large amount of cards. Cut to them turning up, and I'm not pleased with the results. So I ended up ordering them to be printed onto silk because the site I was ordering from was saying that that was the best thing for writing on and there was an option for recycled, so I thought perfect. This might have not ended up so bad had I maybe chosen a larger uh, size for the GSM, uh, but I went with 170. Long story short, I had to reorder. Quite the unfortunate setback, but it did teach me a lesson in patience and also allowed me to exercise uh, the great power of turning and saying no, actually this isn't how I want this to look, this isn't how I want my art to be represented. And coming from someone who is usually just accepts the deal she's given, that's a pretty, pretty big stride. I'm so glad I reordered though, because the ones that came are beautiful quality. They are just so nice to touch. The colors are perfect and yeah they just feel so good and so nice. I went with uncoated recycled paper uh, at 250 GSM. It's what I use for my watercolour Highland Cow art print um, so I knew I would like the quality and it's just what I should have gone with from the beginning honestly. I ordered my cards unfolded there are options to get them folded or you can have a crease embedded into them to make them easier to fold at home. Um, but I just went for a normal A5 print so that I could fold them into my A6 cards myself. And this created for some nice evenings of folding many, many cards. For this process, I would highly recommend a phone folder. It has a cool, dangerous and intriguing name for something that just sort of folds cards. Another important thing not to forget when selling greeting cards is an accompanying envelope. I ordered mine off another site, uh, making sure to go for the C6 size for my A6 envelopes. Last bit to prep before launching was packaging and postage. Uh, this has been something I have developed over time, really. Uh, a nice thing to do for your buyers is to just add little bits to the experience. Uh, a lot of people buy from Etsy because they want to support like independent artists and small businesses. So a great way to show your appreciation, I guess, um, is to like, Add little personalised thank you notes, um, decorated packaging is nice, and um, 
putting it all together to create an aesthetically pleasing experience for the eyes and for the heart and make them feel fuzzy inside. For my cards, I package them up with twine to keep them together uh, the right amount with their respective envelopes. I then wrap them up with tissue paper and a bit of fancy tape ready for their backed envelope that I've also decorated. It's not essential, but I like it. The next step then is to take all the pretty pictures. I had a lot of fun with this, getting to dress up the products and set design a little bit, um, play with different angles and just sort of be a photographer and it's very fun. It's another very enjoyable part of this process, I will say. So then on those pictures go onto Etsy listings and also make sure they're ready for Instagram and wherever else you're posting to start getting like some hype built up. So now we're posting on Etsy and we've got to work out what prices to give these things. It covers the costs of printing, of the envelopes, of packaging, uh, as well as taking into consideration the time I went in to design it, uh, which is important I think. So they are all now ready on Etsy. Uh, the last step, I guess, was to hype them on social media. So since the big release of the cards, um, it's been pretty okay, to be honest. Uh, it's been a nice little routine to like package things up and then walk past the post office, like on my walks and things. I'm definitely going to be looking at doing some new prints in the new year um, and uh, seeing where it takes me really. Uh, and I guess the same with videos. Um, so let me know what you think of this one. I definitely have more to say about this process, um, my journey as an artist, uh, doing a fine art degree, um, literally just testing the waters of all sorts of things right now. So if you want to see more, do stick around. I guess. So yeah, I make Christmas cards. I like to call them Highland Moves uh, because they move. And like in the Scottish accent, it's like Highland Kings. Um, so it's a news. Okay, bye.